that's a good point that you made that the late game composition from United was just superior with the Rom, with the Fafnir. When I looked at Luminosity's draft, I was favoring them at first simply because Aquarius was playing uh, the Hercules, right? Taking that away from Benji. But Benji's got Paul in the Kakul and yet again, showing us why he's still like the top tier soul laner. It's very difficult to play around him. And also this god... Uh, Kakala making such an impact in these t team fights, having two ultimates, just having absolute control. Jeff also took a bit of a risk, I believe. That frenzy pickup was probably to help try and compensate against that late game impact that they were aware United was going to eventually have because of the Fafnir. With a frenzy, you can hopefully try and match that, but unfortunately for Luminosity, it just wasn't to the same extent as the damage of United. So if anything, I, I would prefer to to see them maybe not allow the, the Fafnir through with knowing that there's so many late game hyper carries available. But if you let the Fafnir, or if you don't let the Fafnir get through, you still might let the Kakolin or the Morgan go through. So I think that maybe <laughs> Luminosity has a chance to pick a Fafnir for themselves and then maybe strip away uh, Venanu's Morgan. They gotta decide where their priorities are going to be here. We've got game two here, just about to get underway. Let's get those picks and bands up here on the screen. And, and Toli and Taco, I wanna ask you all about it. Coming out of the picks and bands, going into that second phase of them, they prioritize the Jingwei over that Fafnir. Do you wanna see LG trying to put that support pick a little bit higher? Or do you think maybe it's just they were right to go ahead and focus the hunter. Then. Yes, they should definitely prioritize the support a little bit earlier in the draft. There were just so many support bans sure. from E United in the secondary phase. Ganesh and Xing Chen off the table. Jeff Pilla has been loving this pick simply because of how much control it provides in the team fights between the pancake flip, just kind of whirlwinding throughout every team fight, as well as the damage mitigation with that furious roar. The, the Furious Roar damage mitigation is probably the most important part, in, in my opinion, from what a Shing Tang can bring to a team fight, especially against a team like United, where you know that there's players like Benji, like Scream, who really are just going to play as aggressively as possible to open up a lot of different avenues for their team to approach you from. And I want to talk a little bit here, Taco, because I was asking out in the crowd, you know, what's important with these support picks? And what I kept hearing was safety. How important is it that your support is someone that's safe? Well, the thing about Jeff Hinla is that he probably has the most different play style to all the other supports here. Uh, most supports, sure, they want to peel for their team, but they also want to ensure that they're staying alive as well. Uh, Jeff is more willing to sacrifice himself and ensure that his teammates survive and even if that means eating the hammer stun, that's going to end up getting him trapped in a CC chain forever. That's just the kind of player that Jeff is. And it's it's very different because most supports, it's, it's important to keep them alive. But like I mentioned, he really just goes the full mile for his team. After losing last game, Luminosity selecting the first pick here, flipped bans rather as it was E-United that bans away the Hu Yi and Sir Ket in the first game. Now Luminosity doing the same exact thing. E-United still need their second ban and I think that honestly they might ban away Morgan themselves. It's either the Morrigan or even that Kakolin, possibly. I'm not sure if Luminosity want to take the risk of allowing Benji to get that selection again because there's just so much pressure and Hercules can hope to match it, but once he's able to make those transformations in the lane, it just becomes too complicated to handle. With Kakolin banned, I'm expecting LG to either get Morgan or Fafnir. It's going to be the Morgan, but E United are not going to allow Jeff with the Fafnir. Yeah, this time LG go ahead and pick that Morgan for themselves. But E United really happy with Scream's performance last game on that Robin. They picked that one up again first and wow. the Hercules to go along with it to take it away from Aquarius. So E United still staying true to this double warrior composition and I mean, I love it. Scream is able to initiate if he wants to, dive if he needs to, and more importantly, he just has so much survivability with this Robin pick. I was going to expect uh, the other pick there because the Osiris was still available, right? So therefore, Benji could play either Hercules or Osiris. Maybe they were afraid Luminosity would play, uh, play those both picks. But either way, now Fafnir's left on the table for Luminosity if they want to go for a more late game option. Knowing the kind of player that Benji is, I think that he doesn't care what he selects in the solo lane because he's probably just so confident in himself that he will never fall 
to Aquarius. And even it, you just have to put so much emphasis on that solo lane if you really want a chance at trying to shut down Benji. And that's kind of one thing that United has to their advantage is if a jungler is having to focus out one lane at the start, then you know you can just apply as much map pressure as possible to the opposite side. And they take that RDO pick once again here, do LG along with Jingwei, which Barracuda we saw play last game. Totally. Talk to me about prioritizing this Jingwei early as E United also lock in that Raijin. It's just a comfort pick at this point, honestly. No other team probably prioritizes Jingwei such as Barracuda. It's some it's kind of like a love relationship, honestly, that he has with this character. <laughs> he can never die with her. He'll get back to lane without missing out on any farm. And that's the name of the game for Barra. It's just PvE mode. I think the only other player here who might love Jingwei as much as Barra is probably Ataraxia, but that's it's still a guy that even Ataraxia hasn't played in a while. For Barracuda, I, I think it's also really important for him to take this Jingwei simply because he is against the Hercules. Last time Benji brought out that Herc, you had nonstop Earthbreaker connects. So as Jingwei, he'll at least be able to dash away from that if Benji chooses to try and target him. It's a very important note to basically not allow Benji the momentum that he really needs, which also might allow Barra to play a little bit more aggressive in the late game, something that he's known to do once he has a very comfortable comfortable lead. RDO last game wasn't even picked or banned, surprisingly enough, and now making it through before the secondary ban phase. United choosing to ban away the Thanatos here, trying to slow down Mask for LG in the jungle. And I'm not too surprised about um, Maybe I am a little bit because last game he got the Ratatoskr and he wasn't too big of an impact for him in that game. Do you like them going with this Thanatos trying to slow Mask down? I don't think that that was a pick or a ban rather at Mask. I think it's more targeting out Aquarius, knowing sure. that he played it in game number five against Space Station, and it worked out really well for them. So that's definitely at the soling. And for the Thanatos selection, it could really go either way. Mask loves this god, Aquarius loves this god, and it could potentially catch E United off guard. There's the opportunity for the double execute, and anytime you have two Thanatos is flying around the air and uh, having the ability to mark either the same or two different opponents, very risky because in a lot of those early engagements from game one of these two teams, uh, there were a quite a number of low number of low health targets and with a, such a tanky composition from e united that's taking an option away right there's two executes in this game you're looking at thanatos and the alquang specifically and also maybe potentially e united could be looking for a kepri pick kepri is just one of these picks that's totally eluded us during super regionals yeah we really haven't seen much kepri i agree with you that that's a bit surprising LG take a turn towards banning some hunters, but I mean, Panda Cat's able to pick up that ROM that we saw him play last game to good effect, so he's still probably very comfortable, Taco. For those Kepri kind of selections, it, it all depends because there are lands that we've seen where Kepri just surfaces out of seemingly nowhere and is picked practically every game, and then there's lands like this where he's just completely off the radar. What's not off the radar, though, is Ratatasker and Luminosity, again, Getting this Ratatasker and Morgan combination is going to be very pivotal for their composition. And what I love even more about it is the fact that they have that RDO cripple field just to ensure that nobody can escape from that. But the question now remains is where is this Xing Chen RDO combination going between Aquarius and Jeff Hinla? If I were to bet on it, it'd be Jeff playing that Xing Chen, piling it very well, very effectively. And it's very important here to have the Xing Chen against this late game ROM, LG, Banaway, Uller, and Cardinals to not allow Panda Cat to play aggressive the way he wants to in the early game. That does mean though that E United are able to take Fafnir, quite the luxury when you can last pick a Fafnir for, as your support. So E United, I'm sure, are happy with that one, but LG prioritizing the Xing Chen. Now, though, we got those rosters finalized out. Let's go ahead and get those picks here, Tolly. I mean, I got Luminosity the last time around. Looking at these two drafts, I got to give it to E United. If they get to the late game with Fafnir and Rom, it's over. I, I agree that it's over if it goes that late, but I'm favoring that Morgan selection just a little bit more since it's in Baskin's hands. I'll go for Luminosity this time. All right, Taco's got Luminosity. Totally like that E United composition. Let's go ahead and get it over there to our casters to take it away. Finch, Taco, Tolly, thank you so much. One more time here, uh, joined by Ryan and Graham. And as we get into game number two, series led up by E United, you know, I got I, I to gotta agree with my man uh, Tolly over there. I think that the draft for LG went better this time around. More Peel, more the Morgan, but E United just got exactly what they wanted. I can't believe that Luminosity wanted to ban out a couple hunters instead of banning away Fafnir from Polar Bear Mike. Fafnir yeah. was a big reason why United was so successful in that last game. Fafnir has been a big reason why teams have been successful as a whole 
here at Super Regionals. I mean, he's been the support to watch out for in my mind. And United get it last pick. I will say, though, I'm happy to be seeing Jeff on a, a bit of something that can backline a little bit better. Now, normally we don't yeah. see Jing Ten backline that much, but in this situation here, it will make a very substantial cause of, of problems for United when they try and get to the back line. Obviously, with the knockups and the CC potential out of Jing Ten, it's useful. But not only that, that raw, that first ability that Jing Ten has is a damage reduction as well. It, on those auto attacks that Scream and Panda Cat are going to be looking for, Benji, not quite as much, a little bit more ability oriented. Even Robin is to some extent, but the auto attack weaves in between those uh, between those abilities and and actually does factor in a decent amount of damage for Scream. But you're right, Hindu. I think that the majority of why we see the Xing Chen pick is good peel for warriors in particular. That Xing Chen ultimate is great at picking up and throwing tanks. Not as good at, at backliners who have purification beads, but Jeff can really use this as a peel tool to get Benji and get Scream away from Baskin and Barrack. Do you love what we saw that Polar Bear Mike on the left hand side there? You might not have seen it, but on the mini map, he went between the tier one and tier two tower there straight away to throw his hammer early. So it's available off cooldown again for when it gets to the wave. So he will clear the wave very, very quickly, which means he may be able to help out a little bit more around this middle area. But what is Jeff doing with this tower? Time is my question. Luminosity is giving up an entire wave on the left hand side, the tower, yeah. and Jeff just kind of stood and played bouncer there <laughs> for Venenu and uh, and Panda Cat in the middle lane. I'm not sure that this is the best use of his time, though. I, I think that this puts him a little bit too far behind for my liking. I think the idea was maybe to try and look for some pressure extra in the mid lane and allow them to clear the wave a little bit quicker by turning up late, but in the end, it's just given Mike a lead, which isn't a huge thing, but it can be. I like what Jeff did there, did there real quick. He realized he was a level behind, so he tried to get in between the minions and PBM's basic attacks to get the minion aggro onto the Guardian. Barracuda gonna join up here, but the wave's still intact. So Luminosity's dual lane can't get aggressive. I think that's the issue though, Ryan. What the idea seems to have been is Jeff is so used to playing true support that he will sacrifice himself for the good of the team. And that's why Barra's getting more farm now because of this. Well, ba Barra being the first one in this duo lane is a pretty is a pretty big deal for him. It means that he got an extra wave that Panda Cat did not. Panda instead got back harpies on the left-hand side, which is qu quite clearly a lot less farm than an entire minion wave. So Barracuda should be hitting five a little bit before Panda Cat. And especially if Barra can go over and split this red experience so it looks like that's actually going to be mask and baskin who decide to take that for themselves yeah i was a little bit worried about that when we saw four men grouping up there i'm like okay this is great to share the experience but oversharing it does actually put you at a detriment overall especially when there's enough farm on the map all right now teams uh just kind of slinging back to where they're supposed to go nobody really playing that invade except for benji on the other side of the map who's on his signature hercules uh this this has been a very successful pick for benji throughout the years looking really strong on hercules almost every time he brings it out it's a bit of an issue for that solo lane as well just look at that tier one tower already it's two and a half minutes in ryan you can already see it's down below half health but that's because it's a guardian for aquarius it takes a little bit to get going i mean even rto doesn't have the same early clear as a god like Hercules. By this point, level five, nearing there for Aquarius, he should be able to start clearing the wave a little bit more effectively. And all of a sudden, it might be Benji starting to lose these trades because keep in mind, with those entangling roots that Aquarius has, that cripple field around him, Benji's not gonna be able to driving strike that minion wave. My concern is just a little bit though, that if that tower does fall down too soon, the Guardian is stuck trying to farm the wave still, whereas the Warrior can abuse the fact that he's got lane pressions and start ganking elsewhere on the map. Benji getting ganked a little bit here but he'll be generally fine with a nice mitigate wounds and a back to base mask helping out his solo leaner just a little bit but i don't think benji's too perturbed but this is a good adjustment from luminosity already what was the problem last game benji was left alone benji got too big and benji smashed basically all of luminosity this game mask already even without committing that ultimate decides to head on over and make the gank happen honestly if mask does use the ultimate that may have been first blood for lg at the same time benji gets his full boots so that's kind of when he wants to back anyway sure. he's gonna lose three creeps to the tower get all i think he gets the Entire wave, as far as experience is concerned, loses three creeps of, of, of gold, excuse me. I don't think Benji's that concerned. Well, left hand side, you saw there for a second, Polar Bear Mike just jumped over the wall for a bit of pressure to try and relieve some around Panda Cat, who has been pressured under his tower consistently so it, far. And Jeff just hitting level five really demonstrates how far behind he was to Polar Bear Mike. A full wave behind him nearly. Nice little flip kick. Mask getting aggressed on has to be, so he'll generally be fine here. Screaming Vinay, who can write that down in the notebook, however. Mask with no purification, certainly 
A nice little target. And Mask has to use beads there because of the threat of Venenu's ultimate coming from a distance. Traded out his ultimate for the beads out of Venenu, but just like Benji backing right when he wanted to, same timing for Venenu. Trouble for PBM. He's trying to come around on the backside, but actually Barracuda's the one that feels threatened. Him and Jeff had an opportunity, but they don't commit to it. Baskin starts the rotation, heads right back to lane. Yeah, I like the idea of Barracuda there just to alter way. Just because when you're in that little narrow corridor, it's very tricky to escape Polar Bear Max damage from turning into a dragon. Not only that, if he does hang around, then PBM's got a full rotation of abilities up to continue the pressure. And, and using Jingwei Ultimate in response for Fafnir Ult is a fine trade for Luminosity. I mean, Jingwei Ultimate in the, in the early and even in mid, late, doesn't really matter. You're usually using Airstrike as either a kill secure, and in a lot of situations, getting someone to low health and forcing them out of fight is just as good as getting a kill, so you don't need it. Or it's used as an escape, but Jingwei's already so safe that you're not really missing that ultimate too much, whereas PBM, I mean, that, dr that Draconic Corrupt is such a big part of Fafnir's kit that, that ends up being a win for Luminosity. We've watched games where Jingwei literally doesn't ult. Yeah, Ataraxia played earlier this week. I wasn't going to mention it. And told me that he doesn't think he ulted once the entire game. But See, I wasn't going to put him out there. You, oh, you I called the name out. Well, well, yeah, that's Nate. But if you're not that in danger and you don't need the extra damage to kill someone, then why not use it? No, Always save it. He used it to kill the Titan. Yeah. The best use. Yeah, he of used it once to kill the Titan. It's definitely not like a that's crack. Okay. Did he just ult and it was dead? Yeah, that's it. It's actually, I don't know if you knew this, but if you don't ult all game and use it at like 50 minutes plus, then you actually, it does way more damage. Oh, it's like, when you, it's like when you use a skin, right? Yeah, yeah. That's whenever you get a, a whenever you get our new skins, they oh. do more damage. Well, Mask is not a liar. In fact, he's the guy getting first blood. He's going to trade it out, though, likely. Scream finds it. And it's a one for one. Luminosity get there a little bit sooner. So they get the 400 gold bounty. Scream still in trouble. Aquarius not willing to chase. But what is the what is the game plan here for Luminosity? It's already starting to materialize. It's yep. camping Benji, getting him behind on this Hercules and getting Aquarius ahead, allowing Aquarius to be an impact in this game because he really wasn't able to in game number one. Ooh, Jeff Hitler going to blink right into the mid lane, forcing the ultimate out of Venenu. Still problematic. Venenu going to get jumped on by Mask and put down. Baskin actually taking control of Mask's character. Beautiful decision making there from the boys. Jeff, I was expecting with that blink that he's got, I was going to say, you know what? Majority of these blinks we're going to see out of Jeff Hitler will be defensive ones to support Barracuda in the back line, but he saw, shows some aggression with that and Baskin's decision to hover in the air, wait for the teleport away from Raijin and then follow up straight away. But I, at the same token, I like Venenu's decision to hold on to his purification beads there because he's dead, you know, every single way to Sunday. So you know, no reason to throw away your relic. Now he's got the opportunity to stay safe in case he gets aggressed on again. But it is Sunday. But he, but he's still not safe. Okay. Because it's every way to Sunday, but that includes Sunday. It's kind of implied in in the setting. I don't. I don't. Right, Tom. It's supposed to get better when I have the two of you guys. See, that's what I was just thinking that, that normally, you know, when Hindu and I have a disagreement, no one who's here to back me up. But you're here now, and, and you can tell them that I'm right. Go ahead. No. No, I'm well, not. See, no. so I'm right. Neither of y'all are right. That can't be possible. Yeah, we're, one of us is right, Tom. I'm never wrong. Hindu, how are we supposed to deal with this guy? Normally, it's just you and me disagreeing, but I now know, we have right? someone who's not even going to help us out. That's terrible. I, I, we have program feed, right? You guys realize that you guys are on the left, and I'm on the right. I mean, here, I, I'll be here all week, folks. So I you, do birthdays you, and bar mitzvahs. Did you just say you're on the, your right wing? Is that what you just said? I'm on the right. You're yeah. on the right. Good to know. Yeah. Good to know. Me and, me and Coop play in adult hockey league. He plays left wing. I play right wing. Does Coop play left wing? Yes. Strikes me as more of as a tenacious defender. Well, around the corner comes Barracuda now towards the golf here. And Panda Cat's in a bit of an awkward spot. Forced to all early on. And now Polar Bear Mike Scream on the rotation with Baskin hanging around. This is all for Oracle. That was, that was, so, that was so just... Yeah, you know, it was just a poke on Panda. It was like, hey, are you awake? Panda says, yes, I'll ult. And then everybody goes, all right, we don't want to get robbed. Well-timed by Panda Cat to use the ultimate as CC immunity because it was Barracuda wrapping around, Master's hitting up. him with that gust. Master's just a down, lead. right side. Here comes two players. Banji in trouble. Mitigate Wound's going to help him out a little bit. Aquarius and Mask want to dive the tower. Somebody answer why. The Didn't reason, have cooldowns. Reason being, they just couldn't get in range more than anything else. I mean, they also know Benji was about to heal again. By the time they dive and go for the kill, they get that auto off. He's still going to live. That's done. Now Venenu has to use a purification beads. Look how much damage he took just from a short moment. Now Scream has to go up and over that wall as well. Venenu should count as lucky stars that Baskin doesn't have ult because that would have been a rat transformation for sure. But I love what we're seeing out of Luminosity now. They're actually trying to put E United on the back foot a little bit. You saw game one when they had this Robin. It was Robin leaving the charge. He can't lead it so far. You know why? Because LG's like, we're going to take that idea and push it further behind.
Problem is, you want to talk about pushing. Is uh, I think Benji still has everything he wants. He's about half a level, maybe a quarter level above Aquarius. He's still on one of his favorite gods. He's still Hercules, and he's still going to be able to provide what he did last time. But look at what it's done to the way Scream wants to build. Last game, it was an early Brawler's beat stick. It was damage. It was pen. Because he's not as ahead this game, because Mask is getting better farm this That's game, fair. it's forced him into a more defensive build right off the bat. That could be a Breastplate of Valor. Could be a higher than Nemean Lion. He's got some options there, but the, the moral of the story is that he's not building damage right away. Well, sometimes as well, when you look at Hercules, a lot of people were saying, like Jeff was saying when he was on the desk the other day, about hell, you've got to be here at every stage of the game. Yep. Hercules is kind of like that too in a weird way of looking at it because like he's going to still get to late game and then he's still going to become unkillable. But in the late game, Hercules is just kind of one of those warriors that you try and ignore. He's not, you know, once he uses his cooldowns, he's not going to be able to stick to you very well. So a lot of times you'll just see hunters and, and mages just try and walk right past the Hercules, beads away the driving strike, and then try and handle him whenever everyone else is dead. The times where you can't ignore Hercules is in the early to mid game where he's big, he's doing damage to you, you can't walk past him because he'll kill you all by himself. If they can make sure that Benji doesn't get those items in the early to mid stages, it gets him closer to that we'll just deal with him when we have to stage. At, at the same time, man, I think that's what makes Benji's Hercules so special is that even in the late game, you can't ignore him. He's able to find a home for all of his cooldowns. He's so obnoxious. He's always there. Talk Mask about obnoxious. Show up here on the buff. And Veneno gonna fall down. And now Polar Bear might get a bit of trouble. Has his ultimate available though, so we're gonna try and hold on to it. But with Barra coming around the corner, this could be trouble here for E United a little bit more so. Benji coming in, though, gonna get a nice the one. Cripple field. The Cripple Field stops the driving strike and it stops Benji in total. That was a low aggression. That was not an, an interesting fight until the RDO shows up and just completely turns Benji's aggression on his head. And that's where that counter pick comes into play. Love Luminosity understanding that if they leave, Hercules open, that's probably where United's going to go, and having a plan with it with that quick RTO pick. No Benji available. Means Luminosity going right Ooh. for the Gold Fury. Rom's in the sky. A couple of shots, but the beautiful Ooh. leash. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. Luminosity read the textbook. They'll pick it up one more time. Likely finish it off screen while Mask engages on screen, on scream, and Baskin takes one to the bank. Now he's he's going to survive use... for a second, and now the stealth comes into play, but he's trying to just chuke out away from Venenu. Polar Bear Mike comes in, come in, but that's all he can really do now uh, yeah that's all he can do that's all he can do is stand there yep. that time it was mask the double rat certainly throwing me for a curveball but he united also swinging at the off-speed pitch six to one so far luminosity up by about 4k and again it comes down to that rto cripple being impactful there as soon as Ma as soon as polar bear mike goes into that transformation aquarius pops the two walks right up to him and says thank you very much now you can't jump away and sets up the rest of his team for an easy cleanup kill the scary thing about that as well is that all happened with that small experience lead luminosity had which they were level 12s but no one had based just yet now, Luminosity come back after getting the Gold Fury with their relics as well. E United are going to have to take another trip back to base soon to get their secondary relics, so it's more of a power play for LG here. I love the addition of the RDO to the God selection. I think uh, she brings something, that Cripple Field, you know, a lot of people complained about it, but I think Cripple is an interesting mechanic that we had Ares, and we had Bakasura. And those aren't really characters that you can, one, depend on, and two, have prevalent in the meta at most points in time. The Aquarius bringing out this, out this uh, cripple field can counteract so many different choices that we haven't seen before. A lot of people have said, oh, it was very strong. It's been shown, you know, it's been a lot of picks and bounds, but notice this was four Right pick there, here. right there. Benji gonna suffer a second time. He's got to adapt to that. And this is what I'm talking about. Well, here's a collapse on a PBM, but that's what I'm talking about. As a solo laner, you internalize matchups, sure, but you also just get... you. How long have you been able to play Hercules and pull push without threat of cripple outside of an Ares and a Bacchusur? And you can see how comfortable Aquarius is with it already. Just yeah. stepping up, making sure that Mask can play aggressive without the fear of being hit with that driving strike right into the tower. That's always the fear when it comes to Hercules when you gank him. is like, all right, I got to stay in on his backside, <laughs> make sure he doesn't push me into his tower with him and kill me with the boulder. Now you don't have to worry about that because there's no chance Benji's getting beads just to beads away a cripple. While well, speed buff being started up here by Luminosity, 
Scream comes in though, looking to contest his own buff. Takes a lot of damage already. Overhead kick down as well as Jeff takes him on a ride. And there's a rat in the sky, and there's a two rats on the ground. Scream by a hair. Gonna walk out of here because, as Ryan said, they just they just couldn't find the mark. Venenu certainly will. Mask gonna fall down to the wayside. Big Thorns star. is good. Jeff on the left side sends out the roar, bringing down Venenu. But here comes a different hunter right from the top. Aquarius being taken off of the HP. Still alive right side. Benji, Benji gonna fall down. Oh, no, he's oh, not gonna no. fall down at all. Panda Cat's gonna get picked up by Baskin. Benji just walks away. Barracuda now on his own. No ultimate available. Teamwork. Both relics are alive, but he's not gonna use one. Disgusting. Disgusting. Panda Cat with the double kill and a straight up turnaround from E United results in a 1v3. I don't know how you miss two rat alts. That just <laughs> that just can't happen. I mean, it's it's a huge targeter, and Scream goes into one narrow corridor. Baskin can cover that. Mask can cover the, the juke option, vice versa. doesn't matter. You got to be more patient than that. And that's honestly how that whole fight gets turned around. Because Scream lives, it forces Luminosity to kind of double, you know, do a double take. Did we actually just miss? Now we need to see if we can kill him. Oh, we can't. But now we wasted too much time. And all of a sudden, the United get all the time in the world to try and rotate in and infect that fight. And what you said there is the big key is the fact that they tried to predict where we were going to see Scream go with that ultimate on Raven. Funny enough, I'm not sure whether Scream himself decided to miss the direction he was supposed to go in on purpose because he would have died by going the correct path. And instead, he was slightly off the mark, ended up towards the blue buff pit a little bit more, which meant those rowels missed. Also, Barracuda going for an Aussie instead of an Executioner. Benji gets away with low HP. Could have used that extra damage that the Executioner provided to bring him down. Speaking right about Benji. Now, Benji's low HP again, but I don't think he's getting away. I call it right this time. Benji falls down. Aquarius on the good side. Baskin going to collapse on screen. Two other members here to help him. But here comes Venenu banging on the drums, no ultimate just Ooh. yet. One kill without it. Here comes the secondary push. Aquarius low. <gasps> Aquarius turns around and puts you, Scream down. Did you see Venenu turn around and go, wait, how did you die? Hang on a second, I've got to kill this bear, but the bear's healing, and now another rat has joined the fray. Aquarius gonna go ahead and fall down, but Mass Messy. Venenu a little bit too low. Messy is the word. Well, it's not over yet, because left-hand side, we've got a duo lane fight going on. Polar Bear Mike's very low here. Spun in the air and thrown. Not no, towards Baramis. the airstrike, though. Just off the mark. Just can't find it. Jeff with a nice ultimate. Barra not as nice on the ult. Well, that's going to let somebody get away. What? Okay, first of all, what did Luminosity eat for breakfast this morning? Because they should make sure not to eat that before their Worlds games. I can tell you that right now. Also, when was the last time that Jeff Hinla and Barracuda had a miscommunication? Yeah. Ever. That, was, that was weird. Ever. Jeff Hinla throws PBM towards Barracuda, but Barra expected him to throw him into the Backwards, wall yeah. to, sh to guarantee the autos. When you throw someone into a wall with the Shing Chen ult, if you're right next to it, it means they're in the air for longer because they obviously can't travel through it. So it guarantees more autos guarantees more damage. Jeff, thinking that you only need one more shot, throws him right at Barra to make sure that he's accurate, but Barra was going for the ultimate to get the kill and escape in one motion. Biggest change for me from game one to game two is what Jeff Hindler is doing this game. He wasn't involved last game. He couldn't really get involved last game. This one, 2-0 and 3 on the Jing Ten. He's putting up numbers, not just in terms of offense, but on defense as well. It's a big change that LG needed to bring him in. I mean, that's that's what you want out of Jeff Hindler. That's what you want out of Luminosity for so long this team was dual lane focused with three supporting members now they're a full team but you still want to look at jeff and, uh, and for what it's worth how many autos did barra just hit on the polar bear mike that executioner would have meant uh probably a kill there another another situation where that aussie in my mind comes back to bite barracuda well he does pick up the executioner after the fact but you've been really riding this executioner train hard yeah, it's like the best item in the game, or one of them, and, and there's it, it, it blows my mind that we see so little of it. Right now, E United, good footing on the Gold Fury. Have to keep an eye on the flanking Jing Wei, and they certainly, certainly see her. Polar Bear Mike going to zone players out. Surprisingly enough, though, to see this E United being the aggressors on the Gold Fury, they feel they can take the fight here. They're the ones initiating, trying to draw in Luminosity a little bit more, but it doesn't seem to be getting enough attention. Barra doesn't have beads coming around the back. Still playing aggressive, though, because he has that ultimate and his Aegis. Aquarius right side looking for a flank instead. It meets into e the entirety of E United. Still waiting for the team fight to truly start, but when the rat lands, that's going to be the mark. Mass picks up Venenu. No more ultimate for the mid lane mage. Panda Cat also chased down to the right hand side. Not dead, but essentially gone. Benji's surrounded yep. by LG jerseys, and now he's surrounded by the dirt. 
Polar Bear Mike answers back to Baskin, but this is still all LG. Scream falls down. Polar Bear Mike's going to be next. The is Four gone. player coalesce the Dublin for Mask, and that's going to be a Gold Fury going the way of Luminosity Gaming. And the big thing about that as well was what Barracuda had to deal with. He had Benji in his face, but he danced with Benji. He didn't invest everything into me. He just wanted to make sure he didn't die. So he took Benji out of the fight, but he also took Barrow. out. But I love what Baskin does at the beginning of that fight, and that's why, I mean, you, we've heard so much about, well, you don't want to give a team double Ratatoskr, and, and that is the team fight that demonstrates why, because Baskin has Benji all over him at the beginning of that fight. So what does he do? Press four, pick Rat, press four again, and now he's out of there. I mean, he's in a much better spot. Benji's no way he can chase him, and he puts pressure on the enemy back line. Venenu dies before he can get any relevant damage off. And then you want to talk about against two warriors how valuable two different Ratatoskers doing that prot tread from Flurry of Acorns can be. That's really, really tough to deal with. This draft from Luminosity has been really strong. And in my mind, it goes back to E United allowing LG to pick Rat in the second phase after they had a chance to ban it away. Well, I do like this Jingwei pick as well. It's not something that we see too much of, but the Jingwei against being fully engaged on by warriors over and over again has a lot of escapability. That yeah. knock-up allows you to reposition so easily or fake a reposition and you've still got the ultimate left over too. Barra's being able to play around and this deal too with much. the warriors engaging. The full stick. LG sticking here just with the hunter. Luckily, Mass shows up just in time. That was a dangerous call. LG over. get away with it. And now they're looking for more. Mask at the back end lands nice on Venenu. The ultimate counter accident, however, gonna send Mask out. Here but again. here comes the secondary red ult, and Venenu does not have a secondary ult. So Jeff Hindler takes care of Venenu. And now Polar Bear Mike in a bit of trouble here. Has his ultimate available. Would love to hold on to it if he can, and will manage to for the time being. Left hand side though, Panda Cat split pushing, forcing Barra back as Benji is now aggressed on over here. Scream, safety under the tower, Benji zoning players away from his jungler and luminosity gonna go slink back into the jungle bro poor van man he's gonna be like walking down the street and see a squirrel and just just <laughs> you know twitch because he's, he's had so much problem street? what nothing I don't what? Know, I, you're, you're gonna be walking down the street no van's gonna be van. walking down the street oh. and he's gonna see a squirrel and yeah, he's gonna so think he, of the two and he's too. gonna be really oh i'm the ratatosker i get it Fire Giant started. Benji gonna be started. Benji gonna be finished. And Jeff Hinn is the finisher. Number 16 for Luminosity Gaming. This Fire Giant looks relatively this easy. This is huge as well, because if Luminosity get this, I think the game, the back of the game is kind of broken here. LG have worked out how to deal with this double engage of maybe Benji and Scream, which is send two rats onto Venenu and force everybody to try and defend Venenu. Because Scream can't sit on top of a Ratatosker in the mid lane nope. or in the jungle, so what is he, what, who is he going to be aggressive onto? A uh, Jing Wei, who has insane mobility and can get away anybody. Anyways. Mask chasing out Scream. It's a good chase. Big damage coming out from the rat. He's got Barracuda in the back line as well. Mask going to miss the flurry of acorns. Here comes Barracuda off the jump and takes the last hit away from Mask. And this is a United now just trying to make something happen for themselves on the map. They got a tier one on the left. They got the tier one in mid. Get some gold back. But LG are just grouped up nicely. Human Ratatasker. That's what you meant yeah, by walking down the block. Yeah. Oh! Okay. <laughs> Excellent one. I'd have tweeted about it, but you know. I don't know. Oh, you will. Well, just tweet at me later. We'll do, no problem. Right now, I think there will be a problem. <laughs> United with the 4-1 push. Aquarius here taking care of the tier one by his lonesome. And the rest of the team's gonna show up. Say hi to Venenu, who immediately, immediately, look back. how far away Venenu walks away. And guess what? He still ain't safe. It doesn't matter, exactly, yeah. because Ratatoskr ultimate can make it all the way to there, and Baskin's got his ultimate up. Plus, remember, Ven doesn't have relics for the next 20 seconds or so, so he's gotta be careful. Lucky for him, there's enough structures on the map that Luminosity is more preoccupied with that than killing him for the seventh time. I wanna see a team fight where it starts and Venenu just backs. He Please just hits no. The, like, I, hits the B button, and he's, he's in the fountain, and the two rats are like, what do we do? It's probably the safest place to be, <laughs> to be honest, because he's got flying squirrels everywhere coming out time and time again. And Baskin is really showing, though, how he can play this Morrigan. And that's one thing I want to notice is that North American mid laners took a little while longer than Europeans to start adapting and picking up this Morrigan, but they are showing they can play it just as well, if not better at times. You know, you know it's funny that, that you say that because we, we, were, we were talking earlier, and I this is, this is uh, anecdotal, so somebody's probably going to correct us, but... Cyclone Spin might have been one of the first people to really test the waters. We saw Mask and, and Homie really bring them out as well. But it was the Europeans that played her right 
I think, first. And yeah. Baskin was one of the first NA players to really do it. Yeah, it was pretty prime at a land that really started to show what Morgan could do. Then Zeros, zeros well. pulls it out. And I think a lot of the reason for that was because when Morgan first came out, everyone was like, pressure in mid, pressure in mid, pressure in mid. <laughs> An early game, Morgan doesn't really have any pressure in mid. So everyone kind of went away from the idea of Morgan in mid, tried to fix her into the solo lane or the jungle. It didn't work as well as when you have her as that mid laner. Plus, I think people really underestimated how safe that clear is that yeah. Morgan has and how sure. impactful the auto attack passive is. I mean, getting that extra little splash of auto attack damage to clear the wave, to trade early on, the, the fact that it does so much damage to gods as well, certainly the most underrated part of Morgan's kit, in my mind, is that auto attack. No, I actually, uh, I actually still like Morgan in the jungle, but we just keep seeing her in that mid lane. Well, it's the stealth is the reason you like her in the jungle, probably, because it's yeah. extra gank potential of where is she? That's the same reason why you want to see Loki in the jungle sometimes, because stealth is useful, but <laughs> you're never going to see it because everyone hates him. And hey, nobody wants to see Loki in the jungle. I will say, no. though, in this game, I still don't like Mask getting the thorns hit. No, neither do I. I still think that he needs to be tankier in order to, in order to really make use of it. He's though in this tanky, game, though. he has gone tanky with the health from the Relic Dagger and the Nemean Lion. With a 13k gold lead, it don't matter what Relic you get sometimes. Mask is going to come on the top side and look for Benji, mm. who's going to activate his thorns. Jeff Handler with a nice ult, but it's going to be counteracted by a couple of ults on the other side. Frenzy popped as well. PBM looking for the counter initiation. Benji throws the ball. Here's trouble on the backside, however. Baskin, for no. LG, Pandacat looking for the snipes onto Mask. Baskin going to be the secondary initiator. And now in goes Barracuda. That airstrike did so much work. Polar Bear Mike's in trouble. Everyone Jeff low. and Aquarius is just ripping through Chase, him. Chase. And now that will be a Phoenix. Chase. They won't be able to chase anybody. It's oh. not worth the chase. They invested so much there. They're all the way in there. They're they're all the way <laughs> yeah, in the exactly. fountain. There's Tom's no like, chase. There chase, is chase, chase, chase. Tom is all of my ranked teammates at once, chasing <laughs> kills instead of chase. going for the objectives. The Phoenix is free. The Portal Demon is free. It sets you up for a fire giant that's going to be spawning in the next 40 seconds. So you're in a good spot. Luminosity kind of deviates from the plan that had gotten them so far in this game, which is just double rat ulting Venenu because of the fact that he's got Rod off to Hootie now. They're a little worried about how much damage he's doing and mass ultimate not too impactful there We've got to give credit to where it's due to e united because they recognize that rat ultimate was coming and just back up and force mask onto a bad target but just luminosity being so far ahead is the difference there is to why lg comes out on top because that team fight was fairly even it's just the extra golden experience going the lg's way well, panda could be in a lot of trouble here and he's gonna fall down obviously no relics available or ultimate there so too far forward and the route came out straight away from mass this time you say too far forward. Homie's at his back camps. Listen. Where when, are you safe? Where's his... Nowhere. Like, if you've got no wards in the jungle, and you also know that your rest of your team's dead and your phoenix is down, the furthest forward a carry can be on their own is the very edge. The very edge of that little semicircle around your phoenix. He's got the ward. Where? Back harpies? Right by speed. Sure. So yeah, you know, he's got a water back. Oh, and it's that one water speed. I apologize. He can see his death coming. So That's he, all he, was. he may have placed that ward himself and then went, now I'm dead. <laughs> That's pretty much what could have happened. I think that is what happened, actually. Glad I spent 50 gold for this. Panda Cat. For, for a sentry ward? Oh, 100. Oh, yeah, it is a sentry. Are you cheating and getting wards cheap or something? Like, what's <laughs> that about? I need to. I play mid. We don't make any gold. That's actually fair. Mid lane is where we're going to see Luminosity activate themselves here. Left side, Venetia with a nice little flank, but just not providing the damage that he thinks he can do. But he's going to stay off to the left-hand side on purpose, because if the rat goes up, you, you at least know he's either coming through you or not by staying split from his team, and then he's going to escape. That's 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 the really big key, is that, look, if you're going to engage on me, at least engage on me by myself. Yep. And Venenu being level 18 now, getting closer to that one-shot damage potential, trying to turn it around on the mask, which is where this tankier build the mask has gone for could help him out. Also, the fact that he's picked up this Relic Dagger, meaning that he can be a little bit more aggressive than E-United might be ready for. Most of the time, you know, you're you're looking at the beads. If it's upgraded, you're looking at 130 seconds. You've got that in the back of your mind. Okay, if Mass comes in, we CC him and blow him up. But now you're looking at 100 seconds where that's down. That's not a very long time. That's basically enough time for Luminosity to back, get fire, just kind of re-push up these waves. And Mask has his relics available before the other enemy team does. No, it's this as well. Morgan's been played twice, and so far Morgan has, is winning twice, I should say. It's definitely not over just yet. Looking likely, though. But the Morrigan could be a big thing going into the next pick and ban yep, phase because sure. both teams, whoever's first pick, seems to be wanting that for themselves. They're not going to give it to the other team. This might be the last game we see it.
in North America. It's possible. Luminosity here, 28 and a half in. Baskin on the Morgan, certainly dishing out the taunts. Luminosity up ahead in every category by a long shot. Scream's gonna engage on the Hunter. Meanwhile, Barracuda gonna fight back. Rat one in the sky. Jeff blows it ultimate and chases out a couple of others by himself. Rat two in the sky. Rat one on the ground. Mass gets take care, taken care of by Venenu. Other Panda way Cat. around. Panda Cat looking for it. Rat two gets the kill. Baskin dealing with it. Baskin dealing with it. Baskin wheeling it. Two kills for the mid lane, the Morgan. Three players down to the side of E United. The Titan is going to be next. I think you're totally right, Graham. I don't, I don't know how any team could feel comfortable giving up the Morgan nope. after had the way these two mid laners have played it so far. And it came into account both times as well. The Morrigan was a big influential part of both games. Love the pick for Jeff, though. That felt yeah. really big for me in that game. It's also the way we've been discussing all the way through Elevate, running this triple tank and double hunter, trying to get to the back line is very, very tricky. Ratatosk is really good at that. But then again, it also means that if your front line's all diving in, if no one's protecting the back line, they can't look after themselves. It's GG. Very true, very true. You know, you brought up you brought up the Morgan, right? And how she's gonna be banned out or, or just taken care of. I like that. I agree with that. What replaces her? I mean, the Ratatosker has been impactful for Mask, at least in this game, wasn't in the first. Hercules has lost both games so far, so maybe we see a little bit less prioritization That's towards fair. that. Might be towards Artio, because Aquarius was really annoying to deal with in that game. Just annoying though, like he did the thing against a Hercules, and I feel like, I feel like the RDO neutralized the Hercules, but that's kind of all he did. And again, it, it, in large part because of the ma mask's influence, which enables RTO to get that lead. It, it, it's really more about setting up for your jungler on that gank than doing it all by yourself with the RTO. Definitely up and down between these two. I don't know which way this is going to go. I expected five games, and I'm pretty sure we're going to get it. I said it after game one, LG very good at this. Yep. Uh, although we United aren't that far behind themselves in being able to answer back with issues. Well, that's it for us. Uh, for game number two, let's break it down with Finch, Taco, and Brooklyn Tolly. <laughs> Welcome back here to the desk. We've got LG, we got E United, we got Brooklyn Tolly once again here. Tolly, how you feeling over Forget there? Forget about it. Masto looking really cute there. You know, he can't even <laughs> trash talk properly. He's just too cute. Oh, yeah. I mean, I feel like a lot of the players, though, when it comes to trash talking, majority of the time, like, energy, every single, they weren't even making words. They were just making noises at their opposition. Yeah, like taking a kid from a, from a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Or candy or whatever. Yeah. I can't get it you right can't. either. I'm the same as adapting. I'm the same position. Either way, though, LG going up against E United. We got a best of three on our hands here now as LG has tied it up with E United one to one. And Tolly, what was the biggest difference for you between these two sets? What had LG looking so much better in this game? It's all about picks and bans. It just everything shifts throughout a best of five, best of three now is this audio pick specifically. I'm looking at it here because game number one wasn't picked or banned. Now it was picked before the secondary ban phase. Aquarius playing this RDO didn't really allow Benji to do what he wanted to do in terms of laning phase. Scream, uh, we saw Mask actually get off an early gank, shutting down Benji early. A lot of action in the solo, and that's been basically the theme of this set thus far, is whoever gets the action off early in the solo lane, usually wins the game. RDO was definitely a very strong acquisition for Luminosity in comparison to what they were running in game one. But for me, it was all about that Morgan selection. The double Ratatasker yeah. ultimates yeah. just became way too potent for E United to handle because the second that it, it was really just poor Venenu, he was getting montaged the entire like first 15 minutes of that game. And there's only so much that a Ryzen can do after you use your dash to get away. I mean, he even tried popping the Aegis, the Bs. It didn't matter because no matter matter what, it was either Baskin or Mask that had his number. I think it was around the six minute mark where we first saw Baskin make that tier one tower dive onto Venenu, just can't really get away. And that was the reoccurring theme throughout the rest of the game, honestly, Baskin would transform into Mask, not allowing Venenu to honestly even play the game. And not just Venenu, it felt like really from the beginning here, LG's plan was to shut down, yes, Venenu, but also Benji over there in the solo. They were making, it seemed like a concerted effort to get over there and give him a hard time, totally. And he had options to pick in the solo and whenever he wanted to. Kukulin was banned away by E United. Osiris was still left open for Benji to be aggressive, but he picks the Hercules because of the control that he brings to the team fights between the pulls and the pushes. But Ardio's cripple field is not going to allow you to get off the second part of your combo. And not only that, also was Polar 
Caliber Mike playing the Fafnir that couldn't jump away after the Dragon Form because of the Cripple. Almost every single one of those transformations that PBM made into the Draconic Form, it was just immediately met with that Cripple Field from the RDO. That was also just incredibly excellent positioning by Aquarius. I think that he did a top-notch job when it came to knowing where he was that he needed to be in order to ensure that his teammates could secure the kills. And then I want to ask you all, because it seemed like um, earlier on there in the game, maybe it wasn't the cleanest that we've seen from these two teams, or at least wanted to get you all's opinions on this. After a while, once LG finally kind of broke away, you know, they looked like LG. But talk to you a little bit about er this early to mid game that we were seeing from them. It was just basically the focus between Mask and Baskin pairing up, making the rotations happen. And there was this one team fight where it was actually starting to look good for E United at one point, where LG was getting a little bit too overzealous between the speed and the blue buff of E United. There was two missed Red Attasker ultimates onto Scream that was able to juke away and then even Benji surviving looked good for E United for a moment. Scream just had the juke boots on uh, earlier, but it didn't really make a difference in the long term because Luminosity, once they really got their damage online, the Jingwei as well, Barrett didn't opt for the crit option this time. He just left that to whatever was in his kit, the second ability. And then he opted for the early Aussie. Yeah. And I remember we were speaking specifically about what Barrett could do with this Jingwei the second time around. And I think that that was a huge bonus pickup for the team because he desperately needed a double life steal in game number one, but by the time he was actually opting for it, it was just a little bit too late into the game. He felt really confident even taking that 1v3 skirmish by himself, knowing that he had that Aussie proc. It didn't really save his life that one time around, but honestly, considering how frontline bruiser heavy Luminosity's comp was, especially when Baskin can transform into the Morrigan, I think Barracuda was relatively safe in that game, that he didn't necessarily need the Aussie, but it was just better to be safe than sorry. I'm pretty sure that he only opted for it that early on because the mentality for Luminosity was hit the gas pedal and don't let go of it. And that was exactly what the team did the entire game. They were just consistently chasing after E United, consistently following them into their own tower lines. And anytime you have a team that's feeling that aggressive and willing to do so, I mean, huge shout outs to Jeff Hinla as well on the Shink 10. He just had so much setup and so much patience with a lot of those roots and a lot of those ultimates that really helped his team pop off. Being able to bounce back mentally is never an easy thing, but this top tier North American team, Luminosity, now giving E-United their first loss so far in all of Super Regionals. Yeah, e